Hello, in this video I'm going to give feedback on your assignments but before we start talking about your assignments I'd like to talk about the assignment itself about the balance in general and I'd like to give some examples from the literature and analyze them in terms of balance that was your assignment and the instrumentation is given on the wind instruments, woodwinds and brass and I wrote in the score all the functions which are melody, harmony and bass should be very well balanced and in our online meeting we talk about uh, what is balance a very good question was let's say we have a melodic line here and then a harmony a second harmonic line maybe with other motions and maybe a third one and then a bass line so it is easy to balance the melody and bass because we have only one line let's say we have eight points here and also here eight points and we say they are balanced but what about the harmony should we consider each each single harmonic line individually or should we calculate them together in order to balance the harmony with the melody should they make eight together or every individual line eight 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 I also said this in our online meeting there is not a single answer of this question unfortunately remember in our first lecture or in the second lecture I, I think in the first lecture I said the melody and the bass we can talk about them in 15 minutes in 20 minutes and after that you will know what is to do with them remember the strings I always say take the melody and give to the first violin take the bass line and give to the violoncello and double bass and from five sections three are already done but what do we do what do we do with the middle two with the accompaniment this is the entire education this is the most difficult part and also here this is the most difficult part of the instrumentation what do we do with the harmony it depends on many factors sometimes we take every line individually as in this case or sometimes we can also approach differently let's say it is a choral harmonization choral harmonization means that every voice have that every voice has more or less the same importance level in this case we should balance each voice with each other so what if we have a doubling on one of one voice let's say this voice is doubled at the octave if you also give eight point to this one then they together sound more than necessary then we will hear this those voices together as 16 that means twice as powerful than um, twice as powerful as the melody and bass and also the other uh, harmony voices <clears throat> in this case we should consider them together and give four point to the upper voice or and four point to the lower voice or six 
plus two or something like that. By the way, this pointing method is just a guideline. It is not um, the real world doesn't work that perfect. In the real world, we are going to talk about some examples. We have much more uh, aspects that we should consider. We should consider the color of the instrument. Sometimes doubling doesn't make an instrument stronger. Maybe it contributes to the volume, to the physical volume, but it makes, it blurs the sound. We saw in our last video lecture some examples about that. Three trombones. If three trombones play together, okay, the physical sound becomes louder. If we measure it with a device in computer, we will measure it more, louder. But the perception will be the opposite. It will, uh, together playing, will make the sound softer. Uh, this, is, um, this is another aspect of instrumentation. We cannot explain everything physically. 2 plus 2 makes 4. It doesn't work always like this. But this method is a very good method and this can give us a guideline. This can create a picture. If you see something like that, melody 10, harmony, let's say 8, and bass 4. We can say there's a problem. A bass will be too weak. If you want that in your composition, it is another question. Then you can use that. But if you mostly we don't want that in conventional music at least, then that means you should add some other instruments and make bass lines stronger. <clears throat> so this is visualization of the dynamic levels. But you cannot rely entirely on this method. There are also other facts that are the character of the music. Sometimes we want bass softer, weaker. And sometimes we want harmony stronger than the melody and bass. So, this is one thing. But what if... Okay, we let's say we have a doubling here of the voice, but only in the first chord. After the first chord, they both go to other directions. In this case, we cannot assume that they are the same line. They are two individual lines then. This goes up, this goes down, this is the opposite, etc. But in the first chord, they are together. In this case, we should consider the continuation of music and if you want to balance everything here, then we should give eight points maybe to each of the voices. Together, they will sound as 16 in the first chord, okay, but this is only for the first chord. In this case, the individuality of the voices would be more important. But this is not a rule. I cannot give any rules. No book can, gives, uh, can give any rules about that. This is experience with time if you continue with the instrumentation, if you compose pieces for ensembles, for orchestra, and if you listen to them, if you get them performed, then you will get experience. And sometimes, although it will seem uh, in, unbalanced on the paper, according to this pointing method, it will sound well, it will sound satisfying, considering other facts. So, now I'd like to show you some examples. This is the first one, Tchaikovsky. Symphony number no. 4 in F minor. This is the fourth movement. And we have a tutti passage here. It is fourth simo dynamic. 
and we have all the instruments, also strings, but strings, we do not add strings to our calculation. We cannot give strings points. In the orchestra, the brass section is the loudest section, then the strings, and then the woodwinds. Woodwinds are the weakest uh, section of the orchestra, but still we cannot add uh, strings to our pointing method but we should consider them too. But for now, let's ignore the strings and focus ourselves to the wind instruments only. Also ignore the percussion. Let's focus only to the woodwinds. Full screen. Full screen. So, and this is the condensed score. Let's take the first measure only. We have a melodic line here. The piece is in F major. And if you look at the pitches, you will see in the first beat we hear a C dominant seventh chord. This is five in first inversion because we have E in the bass. And then some other chords, for example, here we have B flat major in, first, in second inversion. And then once again C7 with a suspension in third inversion. Uh, in the second inversion, excuse me. Then G sharp diminished seventh. And the resolution to the F major in first inversion. We have a melodic line. This is the melodic line. And then some accompaniment voices and a bass line. In the accompany, actually we have only two voices because we have G already in the melody. This is also a melodic voice here, G, and we see also here G. And another one here. It is doubled at four octave levels. Let's take a look how many instruments are playing this G. We have it in the flute, in the piccolo, and then in the first flute, once again, and then not in the oboe, in the second oboe, another one, and we don't have it in the clarinet. It is B-flat clarinet, major second, lower is the sound, and then we have it, this is F trumpet, that means perfect fourth, higher. We have it here. It's G, D, F. Let's give it four. And we have it also here in the alto trombone. Another four. That's all. We have it also in the strings, heavily but we ignore the strings now. In the melody, we have 11 points together. As you see, we calculate all the octaves together because they continue together. All the octave uh, doublings continue together, the same line. Let's take a look at the bass. It begins with E and continuous we have it here in the bosons we have two bosons and um, for the bass two points for two bosons and here in the bass trombone and tuba together eight and it makes ten bass. 
Once again, we calculated octaves, octave doublings together. 4 plus 4 and then bosons 1 plus 1 together 10. And as you see, we have a very good balance between them, between melody 11 and bass 10. If you take a look at the middle voices, we have two middle voices. We have B flat and then we have C. Let's begin with C because I see it in the oboe. Uh, in the flute first, in the flute, that means one, and then in the first oboe, another one. Uh, in the clarinet, this will sound B flat. And we have it in the second trumpet. It will sound a perfect fourth higher, that means four. And we have it also here in the tenor trombone, that means also four. Uh, that's all. Together we have 10. You see the balance, a very good balance between C. Uh, once again, we calculated all the octave doublings together. We calculated uh, this C, C6, and this will sound C5 together. And this is uh, C4 also together. So it is 10. What about B flat? We have two clarinets playing B flat, two points, and then we have four horns. Four times two, it makes eight. And then we have that's all. And if we Calculate them together, another 10. Once again, active doublings together. 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2. So, and as you see, we have a perfect balance between each elements of the harmony. The chord has four members, four voices, and each voice is very well balanced, balanced with a slight imbalance uh, between melody and the other functions. But it is perfectly acceptable, perfectly maybe preferable, because we want to hear the melody a little louder. And after that, if you take a look at the strings, we will see the entire first violin plays the melody. Also, the uh, second violin plays the melody. Uh, it is not divisi. There are double stops. That means we hear the entire second violin section playing also the melody at the octave. So that means we will hear a very strong melody and also the entire violoncello and double bass section plays the bass line it is also huge and only we hear the harmony only here in the viola it is weaker in the strings it is weaker but it is also desirable we want to hear, this is the homophonic music. In the homophonic music, in the homophonic texture, we have a melody which should be very uh, significant in the foreground. And we have a bass line, which is the basis of the music. Then we have harmony. And we want to hear melody and bass uh, stronger than the harmony. This is one example. Oh, by the way, I have also a recording. Let's hear this orchestral score. So, uh, 
as you noticed, we hear the melody, we hear the bass, but everything sounds more or less at the same level. We cannot, um, we cannot separate the melody, but we still hear the melody uh, very significant. Another example is also by Tchaikovsky from the Fifth Symphony. This is the second movement. This is another texture. We see here the condensed score. We have melody in four octave levels and then we have bass. We see the doubling of the bass line also here but after that it goes in its own way. It is not a doubling of the bass line, only from time to time they collided. The same situation is also here. In the harmony we have F sharp, but it is not the doubling of the bass line, it is an individual line. In giving points in such situations, we have to separate them. We have to give separate points to the bass line. Although they play the same pitches, we have to give another points to this one because it has an individual line. We have to look how the music continues. So, and then in the harmony, we have these four pitches. This is B minor chord at the beginning in second inversion. And here we have G sharp diminished seventh and resolution to the A dominant seventh chord. And although we have a doubling here of the harmony voices, we have only B and F sharp in the harmony. Actually B and F sharp are doubled at the octave throughout the passage. And here, only at the beginning, we have doubling of these voices. I show it in the score. They are here. And we hear them only in the first measure. After that, they stop playing. So we can ignore them for now and take a look at these harmony tones. Let's begin with the melody. We will ignore these ones and with the melody. We have it in the piccolo, flutes, a due, that means two points. The dynamic is uh, quadruple fortissimo and then two oboes, two clarinets and one bassoon. That means what? By the way, Probably you notice this is a very weak register of the clarinet and it is 40. It is not possible to play in this register a real quadruple fortissimo. Uh, such usages we see in Tchaikovsky. He uses only bassoon, also bassoon in weak register. This is also an example for this, uh, especially the second bassoon. In this dynamic, it won't contribute especially much to the bass line. It is, we don't, we don't understand the reason why Tchaikovsky did this, but Tchaikovsky has um, some unideal usages. The, the works in the literature are not perfect are not always perfect. They have some, they could have, they might have some weaknesses. Uh, they might have some balance problems. They might have some uh, instrumental technical problems. For example, Wagner's scores have, um, and Tchaikovsky's scores have sometimes balance problems. And sometimes we saw a learning process. 
uh, throughout the works of the composer, for example, in Brahms scores, the first works are not especially ideal in terms of orchestration, but in later works he mastered the orchestra. So, and in the melody we have those instruments, those woodwinds, and that's all. We have the melody only woodwind instruments and also in the strings, but we are going to ignore them for now. If we calculate them together, it makes eight. Eight point, the melody. And let's take a look at the bass line. By the way, I clear this two. In the bass line, we have the bass line in the second bassoon one point and in the third trombone and tuba together eight points and that's all if you calculate them together it makes nine once again we see a balance and once again we calculated the individual uh, the active doublings together and here we see a perfect balance melody is a little uh, seems a little less than bass line, but if we consider also the strings, all the string instruments are playing the melody. That means it is much more louder. Only the double bass sports the bass line here. That means the melody will dominate. We are going to hear it. Let's hear it at this point. Then we can hear it once again after we completed our analysis so although all the brass instruments are playing an accompaniment figuration we hear the melody because all the string instruments all the woodwind instruments are playing the melody so let's take a look at the harmony as we said in the harmony we have actually two voices this is a two voice harmony doubled at the octave let's separate them and say harmony one Consider the first chord only, F sharp, this is our harmony 1, and B, this is harmony 2. Let's take a look how many instruments are playing F sharp. F horn will sound perfect fifth lower, we see here, C sharp sounding F sharp, right 2, and 2 trumpets. This is trumpet in A, will sound a minor third lower, we have F sharp, this is eta, together 10. Let's take a look at the B, we have B only in the horns, three horns, first horn, third and fourth horn, and together 6. It seems we have an imbalance between voices. Between harmony voices, we hear F sharp louder than the B, but this is only in the first chord. If we continue with the uh, other beats, we will see, for example, here B and D. We have B and D. I scroll down to get some place. B and D. Here we will see D is played by the first horn, B is played by the second, by the first, by the second. In the horns we have two times D and two times B, uh, four and four. And also in the trumpets, one trumpet plays D and the other one plays B, four plus four. And you can continue to look. This is also 8 and 8. In the first chord, we have an imbalance. We don't know the reason. 
apparently Tchaikovsky wanted to wanted the F sharp uh, to sound louder for some reason. Maybe it has something to do with the line with the previous passage. Maybe a line comes here and ends with F sharp. So that is important that we hear this F sharp. We don't know it, but in the um, continuation of the passage is always a perfect balance 8 to 8 and if you compare them harmony 8 to 8 uh, together louder together 16 but if you consider the individual harmonic elements 8 plus 8 plus 9 plus 8 we can say there's a perfect balance within the woodwind section again except for the first beat and if you also consider the string instruments, the melody dominates. And I'm sure you heard it. Let's listen to it again. And our last example is a um, masterpiece of the orchestration. I mentioned it in our online meeting. Um, if you look for a work to study, this should be your work. Mussorgsky, this is a piece by Mussorgsky. This is the condensed score, but we have also the piano part. Here we have the original piano part, piano score, and then this is the condensed score. And that was another question, the articulation. I get often questions, but the articulation is in the piano score. This... Um, are we allowed to change it? Yes, sometimes you have to change it. Let's take a look what Ravel did here. Mussorgsky wrote the melodic line. Let's listen to the piano part. There's a melody, two measure melody. Then we hear the same melody harmonized in choral style. If you compare it with the orchestral version, you will see you can also make this comparison here. The melody has tenuto articulation in also in the original score, but you see a difference in the slur. In the piano score, we have a longer slur, but in the orchestral version, we have it is changed. It is changed. And also here we have some same changes. It is per beat now. And another difference, we have tenuto, tenuto signs in the melody, in the solo melody, but not in the harmonization. But Ravel also added them to the harmonization. This is the difference between instruments. A clarinet playing staccato and a violin playing staccato uh, is completely different and piano and violin is um, very different you have to consider such differences and adjust the articulation if it is necessary so let's listen to the orchestral version
So by the way, I was um, it was not optimal the uh, placing of the score once again. It begins here with the trumpet and then continues here and then I will scroll down. Okay, the second half we have the strings etc but our topic is wind instruments here we have only uh, brass instruments we have four horns three trumpets and only the third trombone and tuba if you compare the harmonization with the orchestration by the way the clefs G clef G G and F and we have two flats um, in the score actually we have two flats but Ravel didn't we didn't we don't see them here because we don't use key signatures for the horns and although it is not as strict as the horns but we also not use key signatures for the trumpets in conventional music if you compare them we will see some differences The melody is here, although it is a harmonization in choral style, still we hear the melody because we know it from the previous measures and it is the top voice. And the melody is played by the, by the first trumpet, let's write it, we have four points, this is forte dynamic. Something we don't have in the score is the active doubling of the melody. By the way, we have it also here in the horn, another two points, and we have its active doubling. In the score, we have only two pitches doubled. After that, we don't have... Uh, this line is not doubled, We although we have some other doubling of the same voice, for example, here not, and this is also not the same line. This is the third from the top, and this is the fourth from the top. So, but Ravel added this doubling as an individual line, entirely one octave lower. So, we say another two, and that's all. We have eight points, and for the bass line, In the bass line we have here a small deviation but except for this they are always together they are here third trombone and tuba 8 plus uh, excuse me 4 plus 4 together 8 once again we see a perfect balance between bass and melody and this is the most important part actually, having a balance between bass and melody, although sometimes we wish to have a slight imbalance between them. And the harmony, this is a G minor chord, and the second one is F major and G minor again. Let's take a look at this one. We will see that the middle voices are played by the two trumpets, B flat and D. D is here, B flat is here, D is four point, B flat four point, and we have also two horns here. We have D, another two point, 
and here we have B flat another two points that means six each voice is six the harmony voices are a little weaker than the melody and harmony which is completely acceptable so those are some examples I'd like to give um, I wanted to give about the problem of balance uh, I hope it makes it made uh, some question marks in your head a little clearer but as I said it is not that easy I cannot give you some recipes do this and it will work this point system if you apply it you will get decent scores decent acceptable playable etc scores but you cannot entirely rely on them but at the beginning always use them i recommend to use them as a guideline 